So here we are, finally. We survived the first two High School Musical movies somehow, and now we're at the end with High School Musical 3, colon, senior year. Now back in 2008, High School Musical fever was at its peak. Like everyone had fallen in love with this ragtag group of kids for goodness knows what reason. And now it's all coming to a close. This year, 2018, marks the 10th anniversary of High School Musical 3. And the big question that really no one asked except, you know, me, is does the movie still hold up after all these years? Now to be completely honest here, I never actually saw the third movie because, you know, by then I was way too cool, you know what I'm saying? But that being said, let's take a little walk and have a look at High School Musical 3. The movie just starts right out the gate with Troy giving us this hazy look. <laughs> So, you know we're in for a wild ride with this one. So the Wildcats are losing their final championship game. At halftime, Troy gives them all a little pep talk. Hey guys, you heard coach. We're all gonna remember the next 16 minutes for a long time after we leave East High. Really? I mean, like two months into summer break, it'll all just be gone. You know, this is one of those things that all these high school movies and TV shows or whatever, like they always dig into this idea that high school is just the most important part of your life and you're gonna remember it forever. But like, no? I mean, of course you should take it seriously, but still, like, it's just high school. Like, really though, if your peak is high school, it's just all downhill from there anyway. I mean, hey, my life didn't really go anywhere till I was 30, so like, I don't know if that's motivating or depressing, but there you go. Follow your dreams, kids. And just when things are looking their worst, you'll never guess what happens. Oh? <laughs> We're not even five minutes into this movie yet. Now at the after game party, Troy and Gabriella are sitting in Troy's treehouse that he just kind of suddenly has now for some reason. And we learn some shocking news. So, another top secret hiding place. You're the second girl I've ever had up here. But don't worry, the first girl was just my life-size poster of Roxanne from a Goofy movie. Uh, why is it all wrinkled like that? No, 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 no reason, don't worry about it. So like, the main plot thread of this movie is that Troy's friends and family expect him to go to the University of Albuquerque. But he might also have a chance at Juilliard, which honestly makes no sense whatsoever, considering that he sang in one winter musical one time so far in his entire high school career. <laughs> so, you know, I guess it must be that bucket haircut he's got on his head, you know what I'm saying? Let's begin with Mr. Danforth. Your future. It's easy. It's U of A. Hoops all the way. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. McKessie. No. I'm gonna be the president of the United States of America. <laughs> Mr. Bolton. Mr. Bolton. Hmm? Your future. Oh yeah. Uh well, let's see here. I plan to go to college, major in something I don't really care about, graduate with $50,000 in debt, enter a job market that's been systematically dismantled so much I can't even find a job remotely related to my aforementioned college major, and of course the ones I do find only pay minimum wage anyway, so I just have to live the rest of my life knowing that the only way I can pay for medical expenses is with a GoFundMe campaign. So who's ready to graduate? Now one of the sort of kind of side stories of this movie is prom, and everyone's getting nervous about how to ask someone and what are they gonna wear and all that kind of stuff. So Chad here is trying to ask Taylor, but Taylor's just, you know, being all Taylor about it. I was kind of wondering if you'd maybe go with me. Oh, hey, Chad. They have tuna surprise on the menu. It's good. Hey, I'm, I'm asking you to prom. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear you because it's so loud in here. Uh, yo! Wh oh. My friend has something to say. <sighs> uh. 9-11 was an inside job. Anyway, so he asked Taylor to prom. She says yes, finally. And let me get this whole musical number about, you know, try it on prom clothes and all that stuff. Do I want classic or vintage or black? Where's the mirror? I think this tux is too baggy, too tight. It makes me look weird. Uh, I think you're kind of bringing most of that on yourself there, Troy, because what was any of that just now? Hey, guys, do you think this tux makes me look weird? Now, one of the new characters that we kind of meet in this movie is this guy, Rocket Man, who's really just some underclassman dude who keeps bothering Troy because I don't don't actually know why. Anyway, he keeps bothering Troy so much, the musical director lady makes him Troy's understudy in the musical. Yeah, I'm playing the understudy. The understudy isn't a role, you moron. <laughs> well, uh, hate to break it to you, sister, but you're one too. The difference being, I can actually carry a tune. I wouldn't sing with you if my hair was on fire and you were the last bucket of water on earth. <gasps> I wouldn't sing with you if I was starving and you were the last pickle at the picnic. <laughs> what? What does any of this have to do with singing? If I was stuck on a deserted island with no food for a week and you were a sandwich, I totally would not braid your hair. What the heck are you talking about, guys? Wanna go to lunch sometime? Gentlemen, stop. 
to hide your engine. Okay, well, I hope that kid never speaks again. So the whole thing going on with Gabrielle in this movie is that she's been accepted to Stanford, but of course going there means she'll be away from Troy. And this is kind of pulling her in a bunch of different directions. Like, you know, should I stay in Albuquerque? <laughs> like that's even a question. Or go all the way out to Stanford. And here's where Taylor gives honestly the best advice. Girl, your future is calling loud and clear. No, maybe I like it here. Maybe I want to stay in Albuquerque as long as possible. <laughs> stay in Albuquerque? That makes no sense. You know, I can take classes at U of A next fall or something. Did you say U of A? It's obvious that you're not thinking clearly because you're thinking about Troy. I mean, I get it that he's your first crush. Now, I don't really have a joke or anything here, but just like, when I was 18, I moved all the way across the world by myself. Now, I'm not saying everyone should do that. I'll admit, it's a bit extreme. But like, if you can, I highly recommend you leave your hometown, your, your home state or like whatever, and go see what's out there. Like, the world is a huge place. And you're really doing yourself a disservice if you just stay in the same place forever. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Troy and Gabriella have a little pizza party picnic thing in a room and talk things over. Your freshman honors program at Stanford. A lot of people heard about it. But I wasn't one of them. Why? Because I knew what you would say. Of course you should do the honors program. Is that what you were trying to tell me? The backyard the other day? One of the things. What else? Oh geez, lots of stuff you don't know about me. Where, where do I even start? Uh, let's see. In my closet, there's a couple jars full of toenails. Mine, of course, because, you know, I'm not like some kind of weirdo or anything. I used to go into AOL chat rooms pretending to be a 40-year-old man just to throw people off. All kinds of stuff, Troy. You should probably get out of here. I'm a lot better at goodbyes than you. Why are you saying goodbye? We still have prom. We still have to graduate. <laughs> I meant goodnight. Okay, wait a second here. You actually meant to say that you're better at good nights than him? What does that even mean? So Gabriella gets accepted into some kind of like early semester honors program at Stanford, which means she has to go there like way early and can't participate in the musical or like anything like that. Yes, Gabriella once again, just kind of disappears. I think I'm seeing a pattern here. Anyway, at home, Troy talks to his dad about going off to college and he gets all riled up because I just want to follow my dreams, dad. Yeah, U of A isn't the only school that's talked to me, dad. You know that. But it's the only school we talked about. Chad would be awfully disappointed if you decide to change your mind. No, Chad would get over it. You raised me to make my own choices, and I need to make them. Not you or Chad or anybody else. Me. So he goes back to school and goes through this whole musical number thing, which is really just like a souped up version of that magical princess twirl song from the second movie. But then when the song's over, this happens. <laughs> Miss D? See, it's true. Teachers do live at school. I knew it! But like, seriously though, if she was just sitting there, like, or whatever, you know, that's one thing. But she was sitting in the auditorium, alone, in the dark? Run for your life, Troy! It's an ambush! At some point later in time, Troy comes home with his prom tux, and his mom reacts just about the way you'd expect. Hi! <gasps> wow! Gorgeous! <laughs> oh. I love how in just like this half second moment, there's a whole conversation that happens between Troy's mom and Chad. Hey, uh, you want a kiss too? Nah, I'm all right, thanks. You sure? <laughs> I'm kind of on a roll here. Nah, it's all right, Mrs. Bolton. I don't even like y'all that much anyway. Yeah, that's what they all say. After this, Troy gets a phone call from Gabriella, who tells him some bad news. We need to talk. Gabriella, promise in two days. You're supposed to be on a plane right now. It's taken me two weeks to get used to being away from you. So would I come back? Go to prom and leave again? I think I've run out of goodbyes. Why do you keep saying goodbye? I love you, Wildcat. But I need to stay right where I am. But what, you think Troy's just gonna roll over and take it? Ha! Nope. He's gonna drive a thousand miles in like four hours somehow and surprise her at Stanford. What a swell guy. So somehow they end up making it back in time to put on the musical, which turns out is actually just the entire movie that we just watched. A whole bunch of wacky antics ensue and Troy ends up giving some kind of speech at graduation. East High is a place where teachers encouraged us to break the status quo. It's a place where one person, if it's the right person, changes us all. Which 
raises a lot of questions here. Like, does that mean he was valedictorian, not Gabriella or Taylor or literally anyone else? Or is it just because he was the captain of the basketball team? Because, like, that's kind of a big old middle finger to every other sports team at the school, don't you think? Now, you may have noticed that I didn't actually say anything about Sharpay. And there's one very important reason for that. She doesn't do anything in this movie! She's not a villain. She doesn't affect the story at all. She just kind of, like, exists in the same space as everyone else. All she really does is sing a song about wanting to be famous. Shocking, right? But yeah, so these movies are really something else, you know? I will say though, High School Musical 3, I guess, just had this huge budget or something, because like all of a sudden, everything is 10 times bigger than before. And this movie in particular, like, there's almost more songs than actual movie. Like seriously, no joke, the last 20 minutes are all singing. There's really not a lot of movie here at all. It's basically just like Troy brooding about whatever, and then singing about brooding, and that's the movie. The movie itself is just like whatever, but aesthetically, it's a pretty movie. I'll give it that. There's a lot of interesting color theory going on in a lot of places. You know, watching all these movies in a row, like, I guess I can see why they were so big at the time. Because, like, they just have every element of a popular tween teen movie thing or whatever just all crammed together. And, like, with all the bright colors and music and dancing and all that, I can see how people got distracted from the fact that these movies don't actually make a lot of sense. There's several parts in these movies that, like, if you just think about it, you know, for, like, five seconds or whatever, you're just, like... Wait, what? But I'll say this, despite everything I've said over the last three videos now, I'm actually glad these movies exist. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. So really quick, first thing here, um, so usually, you know, I have t-shirts or whatever, like related to the movie or TV show that I'm talking about. I've had people say that they want, you know, my merch, not necessarily like High School Musical or uh, you know, DC Comics merch, but like my merch. And so I actually do have a store open on Teespring. Anyway, so I got a couple of new things in there. I got this new shirt here. Uh, the best thing about high school is the fact that it ends. Apparently this is something that I said in like, uh, I think a Vampire Diaries video, whatever. I asked people what kind of merch they would want. Um, and this was something that came up a couple of times and I, I, I vaguely remember saying this. And uh, so it's there, I got men's size, women's sizes, sweatshirts, tank tops, you know, all kinds of stuff like pillows and stuff. So if you're interested or you just want to help support the channel, you know, it's there. Now with the High School Musical movies, you know, one thing I noticed after finishing up this third one, like every character kind of goes through this arc, right? It's like, you know, Troy is like this sports jock and then he turns into this like theater guy and then Gabriella is this like shy nerdy girl who, you know, branches out. Um, Sharpay's brother, you know, like he initially is interested in the fame and fortune just like Sharpay is, but then, you know, by the end, it's like he just does it for the love of the craft. Like he just wants to make good, you know, musical stuff, whatever. But the one character that we learn nothing about ever is Sharpay. Like in three movies, we don't learn any new information about her as a person. What's her backstory? Like there's no kind of like second or third dimension that makes her more sympathetic as a person. Like, no, she's just the same character all the time. She never grows, never changes, never does anything. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching this video you know i've been doing these high school musical videos and and you all seem to enjoy them and i love doing them as well because it's very kind of nostalgic for me so i'm glad you all enjoy the videos you know one thing i try to do with these videos you know so i'm just learning how to animate like i'm kind of teaching myself i'm kind of putting myself through this kind of animation like crash course or whatever and and usually every video i try and focus on like one particular concept or principle of animation and so with this video one thing i've been trying to do is work on anticipation you know like they'll have a face and then they'll like blink and scrunch their face and then they'll make another face like things like that it's really small and i'm sure no one really cares but it's just something that for me i've been trying to work on anyway if you're new here don't forget to subscribe ring that bell so you know you don't miss any videos from me you know how youtube is sometimes follow me on twitter let me know you know what's your favorite part of the video what's your favorite video i've done or you got any recommendations of what's coming out you know there's that new uh insatiable just came out so you better believe I'm gonna be on top of that. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. Uh, my wife posts pictures there about every single day, so if you want some more Charlie in your life, you know, there you go. Above all else, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.